Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So out here on our homestead we have 41 acres and we've got a mixture of a lot of things. So we've got some pasture ground, we've got some woods, we've got a pond, we've got some rented out farm ground, uh, and we have a hay field. So we've got quite a wide range of, of land out here on our property. And you can see behind this barn right here, we've got, uh, we've got about one and a half acres of pasture right here behind this barn. But I don't have any perimeter fence up, so there's no fencing to keep animals in, so I can't let them out here and graze this grass right now. So it's kind of getting wasted at the moment, I guess. All the animals here in this livestock barn here, all they have is the barnyard. And there's a little bit of grass back on this side over here, but there's really not much there for them to forage. And they mostly just eat hay, and they've ate hay all winter long. And we ended up having 70 bales of hay, I think, when we went into you know, that we got right before winter. And uh, we are down to less than 10 bales of hay, pretty much. So we need to get these goats out here on pasture so they can graze. So I've got some Premier One uh, electric netting. I've got some poultry netting, but it'll work fine for the goats because we are already using it up front for our billy goats. So what I wanna do today is, these animals here have not been trained to electric fence. So we're going to set up the electric fencing first. We're going to set it up on the inside of the barnyard, real close uh, to the barnyard fence, um, and try to train the animals to it so that they can get curious, get up there, get shocked, and learn to stay away from it. Um, probably tomorrow, once they've trained to the fence, we will come out here and we will get, we will get this uh, netting set up out here in the pasture. We'll open up one of these gates here. and. Uh, we'll see how big of an area we can set up. So this, the poultry netting I have is 164 feet. So I think I can set up maybe a pretty decent little area here. Um, I already have a little bit of field fencing up um, on this side as well over here. So I can use those fence in conjunction with the electric fence and probably set up a nice area for the goats. But let's go ahead and see if we can get the fence set up, get our solar uh, electric fence charger set up and get these animals in here trained to the fence. So this here is one of uh, Premier One's, I think it's like a fiber tough fence post or something. This, if you order the net uh, kit, it ends up giving you four of these posts. It's got a slot on the top where you can put the top of the, of the netting in it and you can use it to kind of, you know, help support and take sags out of the netting. And there you go. So we got our solar fence charger from Premier One. I'm gonna open this up. All right. So on the inside, you'll see we have a battery. So it's just a regular uh, 12 volt battery in here. And we got it hooked up and ready to go. Okay, so on the side here, you got where you hook up your, your wires. So this is our positive one. There's a hole, there's a hole in this bolt that you slide the wire through and then you tighten it down. Do the same with the negative.
I'm gonna take these bolts out of the side of this solar panel. And it came with these knobs instead, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put these knobs in here. That way you don't need tools. So this uh, solar fence charger has a ground spike on the bottom and that's what's supposed to ground the system and hold uh, the solar panel in place. So we're going to stick that in the ground. So after you got that in the ground you just got to take your uh, negative side of the battery, the, the black alligator clip, and just got to clip it on to that, to that uh, metal spike in, that's in the ground. So then we'll take our positive side. I got a tick on me. I got a tick. It's tick season already. And on the fence, there's a little spot on the fence to attach it. So all you got to do to turn it on is push this little button on the back of the charger. And uh, you will see that it will blink green every time that it uh, electrifies the fence. So I've got the electric netting installed. I've got it about a foot away from the, the barnyard fence here. And I think I've got it propped up enough that it's not sagging, it's not touching uh, the fence, because it would ground it out if it touched the field fence behind it. But the idea is, since there's a fence behind it, there's a barrier back there. And if an animal gets shocked, they're not going to instinctively jump into a, the fence back there. You know, they're going to try to back away from it. So hopefully we won't get any animals caught in this. Um, they will, they will jump away. But we do have some baby goats here in the barnyard, so we're just going to have to keep our eye on it here for a little bit and watch until everybody gets shocked and just see how it goes. But that's kind of the idea: is, is they know that 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 hard fence is back there, so they're not going to want to jump into a wall, basically into that fence. So hopefully their reaction will be to back up away from it. So it looks like the uh, looks like the animals would rather stay in the barn than go out in the barnyard. So I don't think they've discovered the electric netting yet. So while I'm waiting on the animals, we're cooking a pork shoulder today. We're smoking a pork shoulder in the pellet grill, and um, this is actually this will give me and Rebecca enough to eat for probably close to a week. We're gonna get several meals out of this. And um, this is actually from one of the pigs that we butchered last year. But uh, I personally like having a lot of food kind of cooked up and in the fridge. That way I can kind of come inside, heat it up, and eat it quickly and go back to work. So I don't like to really waste a lot of time cooking meals during the day when it's so nice outside like this. So anyway, we're going to smoke this till about 190 degrees. Um, and it should pull fairly easy when the meat gets that hot. It should be... Uh, should be easy to pull and we'll have pulled pork sandwiches. We also like to have pulled pork nachos and uh, we can make several different meals out of this pork shoulder here. So we've had the electric netting set up in the barnyard all day long now. Um, hopefully all the animals have touched it and tested it or at least seen another animal uh, get shocked and know to stay away from it. Um, it's been a pretty productive day. All day we um, stayed busy. Rebecca did a lot of fishing today. Well, Rebecca loves to fish, and she caught three more bass today. So I'll end up filleting those up tonight. Probably end up eating them tomorrow. And I ended up going to, uh, I ended up spending most of my day out in the garden, got some seeds planted, and was able to uh, get all the garden beds weeded. Hey, what are you guys doing? Knock it off. This is my carrot bed. Hey, Scout, look at me. You look dirty. You look dirty. You need to stop. Rebecca's teaching you bad things. They're just copying you. Yeah, but I'm like actually taking weeds and stuff out. Well, there were weeds over there at one point. I mean, this is like awesome soil here too, and they're spreading it everywhere. So now I'm going to go ahead. I think the pork uh, shoulder's done. I'm going to go ahead and head over there and get that out of the grill. So here's our uh, pork shoulder that we smoked all day long. 
I don't know if you can tell the bones starting to slide out of this end but uh, we'll get this uh, pulled we'll let it rest for about uh, 30 minutes or so and then we'll pull it so we got the pork shoulder all pulled and uh, got it all shredded up nice tastes pretty good well it's the next day now and first thing this morning 6 30 in the morning I got up I came out here and let all the animals out and then I was planning to come back after my morning coffee and move this this electric netting but it ended up raining so it rained for a few hours it's about noon right now and I think it's done raining for the rest of the day so the goats are kind of squawking at me they don't like to get out in the rain and I really didn't give them I didn't give them any extra hay today so I'm hoping once I get this electric netting moved uh, out in the pasture that'll uh, help encourage the goats to get out there and start eating that grass so I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the electric netting and moving it out into the pasture see how big of an area we can make Come on, goat. Come on. How do you call a goat anyway? I'm not sure. Um, well, I don't think the goats are going to come out here. They uh, think they're a little bit leery of this area. They've not been outside the barnyard. Uh, so they feel safe in there. They're not sure to think about what's out here. Plus, Scout. Scout ended up putting his face through the netting and uh, uh, ended up barking and yelping pretty good for a while. So I think that scared the goats as well. So they're not sure what to think so <laughs> anyway we'll just keep an eye on it and see if they get out here and graze I think eventually they'll get hungry enough um, they'll get out here but if you look out here you'll see there's plenty of grass out here oh you, you hear that owl we've got some loud owls around here even during the day but uh there's probably this is probably six to eight inches tall the grass and uh, definitely I mean there's plenty of forage out here just for these goats because there's only there's only like four goats in there plus the two babies in this barn right here so anyway let's just wait and see what happens Well, it's great to finally have the animals be able to get out here in the pasture and graze a little bit. The chickens are out here free ranging. And uh, yeah, this is, I think this is gonna work out really well. So I had a heck of a time getting these guys on film. I tried actually coming up here in the pickup truck and as soon as they heard the truck, they all ran out of the pasture up to the front of the barn to see what I was doing. Um, 
So then I had to wait for them to come back to the pasture again. I did get a little bit of drone footage and then I had to sneak back here and actually come in from the back. That way the goat, because if I come to the front of the barn, the goats and everybody will just run up front. <clears throat> so yeah, I think it's going to work out pretty good. I, I wish I would have done this last year. I'll be totally honest with you. Um, we did get this netting for the first time for our boy goats up front and it lasted all winter and uh, very happy with the way it worked out. I wish I would have just went ahead and done it back here at the same time. But uh, you can see we've got fencing stretched from this corner post here. And it stretches all the way around. And then there is another end post right there. Because um, we have two sides that are field fencing. We have a field fencing on this side and then field fencing on this side. So we only had to really make two more sides with this electric fence. We've got a nice big area here for the animals to be able to uh, free range in. So... I think it's gonna work out pretty good. So uh, this will hopefully cut down on the amount of hay that we have to feed the goats. Um, I know we are getting low, not getting ready to sprinkle. Won't be surprised if they'll run in here in a second, but um, they won't stay out here in the rain. So on rainy days and certain times, I'm, I'm gonna still have to give them hay. Um, so that's what sucks is I, I'm gonna be cutting my own hay here eventually, but I'll probably have to end up going and buying just a little bit more before I get to that point. But hopefully this will cut down on the amount of hay these guys need, and it'll make actually owning goats a lot more cheaper if they have the pasture to use. So anyway, so I know the way the world is right now, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of stay-at-home orders. There's a lot of kind of like lockdowns going on, and Illinois is no no different than that. In fact, we've probably been going through one for two to three weeks now, and um, me and Rebecca were both still constantly working through all that. Um, and I know a lot of people may end up with a lot of spare time on their hands, maybe getting stir crazy. I mean, we, luckily we have all this this property. We're very lucky in that aspect, and there's plenty of stuff for us to do. The only the only problem will be is trying to you know get everything done with what we have on hand and not making any unnecessary trips to town. Um, but uh, yeah, we were pretty lucky that uh, I don't think we're going to get bored out here. We're going to have plenty of stuff uh, to keep us busy. Um, Rebecca, I mean, she, she is still working as a nurse, um, and she has picked up a lot of shifts here lately. Um, they're constantly calling, asking for extra people. So, uh, so she has been fairly busy. You may not see her on the channel too much. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'm going to go ahead and head inside and fry up those fish that Rebecca caught the other day. Have me some supper. Thanks for watching. We always cut our fish up into nuggets. That way you got more breading on there, you know? You get, you get a little bit of breading in every bite. Okay, homemade shoestring fries. These will pop. Oops, I dropped one. Hey, Scout, watch it. Careful. Hey, hey, you guys are killing me. Go, no, go over there. Go over there. Let me get, let me, uh, give me some space. I'm supposed to be taking out the weeds. Ugh. I already got them. <laughs>